Kasiu, chodź, zrobimy próbę mikrofonów. Dzień dobry. Szanowni Państwo, drogie przyjaciółki, drogie Ladies and gentlemen, dear friends and guests, we are glad that we can meet today here in the Faculty of Humanities of the University of Silesia. We are now in the Andrzej Pawlikowski Hall, a prominent uh, scholar and an inspiring scientist, co-author of the Institute of Physics of our university. It's no accident that for students of humanities he is so important. And it's also uh, no incident that in Silesia, in Katowice, we are organizing for the first time the International Congress on Education Quality. Organization of such an important event on education and, and its quality, ways of improving didactics competencies of uh, academics or the possibilities of supporting the educational process was possible only as a result of cooperation of all the seven uh, public universities in Katowice that, um, that uh, are combined to um, the consortium. And through this cooperation and involvement of all the universities within the consortium, uh, can, we, uh, res can we develop the idea of universitas as a, for a university uh, as a place where through through uh, improvement of education can we enlighten the uh, students and university is a symbolic thing that combines uh, technical universities, academies uh, and other universities. This international congress has been developed as an annual meeting of anyone who, who um, who believe that uh, the universities should be ready for an insight into themselves and into the world, uh, ready for um, a reliable discussion and for self-development. Yesterday, um, the lecturers from all the uh, universities within our consortium participated in meetings, talked about quality of education, supported their own didactics competencies. We had the chance to visit each other within the consortium uh, members to get to understand the specifics of education in the respective uh, areas of, uh, of science. Today we would like to concentrate on the quality of education within the context of the obligation towards students, but also towards the business and economic uh, environment of our universities. What is also important is the accreditation process from the Polish accreditation commissions and from foreign accreditation uh, institutions. Tomorrow is the International Day. Uh, Colleagues from several dozen universities from around the world have arrived and who are going to have uh, lectures uh, tomorrow. We are going to listen about, uh, to hear about uh, results of international cooperation and get to know each other, which I hope will result in further projects and friendships. Ladies and gentlemen, although the International Congress on Education Quality started yesterday, today is the um, official uh, opening of this uh, event. Ladies and gentlemen, Madam Rector mentioned several um, moments ago about the wonder that leads us to um, knowledge, which is a, a natural thing in every journey, including the journey of education. We will hear more about this journey during the inauguration um, lecture. And uh, today's lecture will be especially significant and will make us think about the role, role of university, which uh, presupposes the highest quality at every stage of this journey. Quote, the university serves, serves the purpose of education when, by learning, I am learning myself and, paradoxically, I am continually tearing down all the transitional um, mm, mm, 
fixed things that only yesterday seemed so solid and secure to me. Knowledge is what continually renews the difference between me and the world and between me and myself. The university then is a place that derives its energy from discovering what one does not know rather than from what one does know. Ladies and gentlemen, let's meet our prominent and distinguished guests on behalf of the rectors of the universities forming the academic consortium Katowice City of Science. I would like to welcome Mr. Martin Chaya, director of the Department of Higher Education at the Ministry of Education and Science. Mr. Minister is on his way. Sorry. Uh, Dr. Martin Powers, Professor of the University of Warsaw, President of the General Council for Science and Higher Education. Mr. Waldemar Bojarun, Deputy Mayor of the City of Katowice. Dr. Pawek Poszytek, Director General of the Foundation for Development of the Education System, Director of the National Agency of the Erasmus Plus Program and of the European Solidarity Corps. Dr. Paweł Kuch, and Director of the National Center for Research and Development. Dr. David Kostecki, Director of the National Academic Exchange Agency. Dr. Anna Budzanowska, Plenipotentiary for the European Capital of Science, Katowice, 2024. Mr. Bartosz Stawiasz, Director of the Regional Cooperation Office of the Foundation for Development of the Education System Agency for the Erasmus Plus Program and the European Solidarity Corps. Jacek Szczotek, uh, the Deputy um, Superintendent for Education. Dr. Karol, Karol Makles, Deputy Director of the Silesian Museum in Katowice. Uh, Jarosław Olszewski, President of the National Representation of Doctoral, doctoral Students. Uh, Dr. Uh, head of the Polish um, of the University um, Accreditation Commission, Dr. Maria Pruchnicka, and all the deputy rectors from that commission. Also, I'd like to welcome uh, participants in today's panel discussion. Professor Maria Pruchnicka, Secretary of the Polish Accreditation Commission. Professor Zbigniew Marciniak. Professor Łukasz Sukowski. Um, Dr. Beata Mikołajczyk. Dr. Agnieszka Jania Jasińska and Mr. Mirosław Kiermaszek, a representative of employers. We are glad that we have with us the rectors, deputy rectors, deans, chancellors, academic lecturers, students, PhD students, and alumni of our universities. We are also grateful for the presence of representatives of the educational, medical, uniformed and business communities, uh, representatives of cultural institutions and of the medium. I would also like to welcome all the guests who have um, arrived here and all those watching today's ceremony via online transmission. Mr. Wojciech Murdzek, Secretary of State and Plenipotentiary of the Government for Reform of the um, Functioning of Research Institutes, cannot be couldn't be with us today, but he is following the online transmission and he has prepared a short speech that we're going to hear right now. Szanowni Państwo, obserwujemy. Ladies and gentlemen. We can see uh, great uh, dynamics and changes, often of global character. We observe changes in the economy, different uh, social changes, 
very dynamic changes in uh, technology and development in the process of education. These are very significant because they develop the um, foundations for the previously uh, listed changes. We would like Poland to, um, to be distinguished, to improve, keep improving its uh, position in economy so that the social um, solutions practiced in Poland constitute uh, best practices so that our science and education uh, distinguish uh, themselves on an international arena and that's why the process of education is so uh, important and in the process of education itself we can see numerous challenges and trends we see uh, significant changes resulting for example from the pandemic and we see how difficult it is sometimes to come to terms between, for example, proportions of, uh, of um, stationary and non-stationary education and how to make use of the technologies that we have at our disposal. How not to forget about the important chances for interactions between uh, the uh, the master and student and between and among students among phd students well uh, we are becoming more and more internationalized uh, which also uh, results in a clash of this education of the um, primary school education but also cultural uh, clashes different achievements different uh, environments we need to combine these more and more uh, in, in smartly because uh, only when we have international teams and that provide synergy will we be able to achieve success and that's why these tools and methods of education have to keep being adapted we have to develop uh, best practices we have to learn from those that uh, excel in that that's why we um, support didactics uh, excellence initiatives as the basis for educating as Mm, the people who will um, have proper um, proper um, abilities, but also in the uh, process of education, we also educate teachers. Uh, so those who are responsible for teaching others, and, and that's why it's a great responsibility. Well, in Poland, uh, we are now uh, looking, waiting for the final uh, evaluation results, and we have to um, remember about uh, the proportions, which demonstrate different um, dependencies between didactics processes, with um, practical classes, with different uh, needs for implementation, with uh, purely uh, R&D work where the decision on how much didactics there should be, how much um, research work is, uh, is a great challenge. Well, the first international congress on education quality organized by yourselves as the universities making up the consortium under the brand of Katowice City of Science, that's a very important event. And to enter different events and initiatives uh, in the schedule of Katowice, uh, well, that's, I think it's very good that it, this, this event um, uh, is one of the first ones. And it's, uh, that's why it's uh, especially important uh, as it um, affects many, many areas. And I hope that uh, the um, conversations and experiences from this Congress will translate to good practices for the future so that they become more and more common, not only in Silesia, but also uh, so not only in the capital of science, because to be a capital of science, it's a European thing, a European dimension. So international exchange of experiences indicating the best solutions, this should 
uh, emanate to Poland, to Europe, so that this is uh, at the beginning of, uh, of numerous successes of Katowice as the city of science through its contribution to the European to European science and naturally making sure that Poland develops um, best uh, and making use making use of the uh, human uh, capital of well educated people who who are a sign of how good the universities or the, bus the, the businesses are. So I hope you will have some good talks, good deliberations, conversations, and I'm sure the results of this first Congress will be great. Thank you very much. Szanowni Państwo, ladies and gentlemen, now let's refer to another of our great lecturers. So let me quote, therefore, although the university is an institution in the sense of its structures and legal rules of operation, its essential mission lies elsewhere in moving all that is fixed in leading out of a state of entanglement in questioning the fixity of the established order of things. Yes, it is an institution, but it fulfills its task as a destitution when it allows thoughts to leave the safe havens of all that is fixed and seemingly unshakable. End of quote. Now, I would like to give the floor to honorable rectors of the universities that are part of the consortium to take the floor. Now, they are the ones who know best how to combine these two missions of the universities and thus build the best quality in education as well. And we invite all you, uh, all the rectors of the consortium to take this to, to the stage. And I would like to ask Lesław Tetla. Rector to join us. And now I would like to ask Professor Richard Koziołek, Vice um, Rector of the University of Silesia, uh, Vice Chairman of the Conference of Rectors of Polish Universities, to take the floor. Please. Thank you. Welcome. Good morning, everybody. It's a dream coming true today for me that I was born in 2018 when we finalized the work on the current law on higher education. This dream was um, to put as equal effort discussion uh, and, um, and, and strength in how to develop our universities. We did not uh, have time to do that back then. We dedicated a lot of time for education, for, for science, but not enough for education. But today I think it was good, not just because somebody thought about it and figured it out like that, but it uh, seems that uh, being cautious uh, was a good idea. When we think about this allegory of removing obstacles, what we did was to elevate our structures that uh, shaped our universities, we actually rebuilt them anew. It was a gesture of freedom and change. When we're at the end of the process of evaluation, the last stage of this very long process, when we know a lot already about how our universities are shaped and formed scientifically, how beneficial and non-beneficial um, effects it has to, for our um, academic units. It's, I think, high time to think about education. I am really happy that we are here together, public uh, universities of the city of uh, Katowice were combined by the city uh, that is the host. Uh, of very innovative um, undertakings that take part, that happen here in this city. Thanks to our efforts of the city and of the university, we gained the title of European City of, uh, um, of Science for 2024 for Katowice. This title and this work have opened us for one another. We start to perceive one another and the richness that surrounds us and what combines us, which is the city. 
science and education, specifically education, will become uh, boundaryless, uh, limitless, not only lifelong, we know there's no end to uh, good education, but it should in be intertwined with what is different. The fact that we are here together as representatives of all kinds of universities of different identities is the best sign showing that the borders, the limits that we want to, that Professor Suavek will speak about getting rid of those limits, that's something we need to uh, focus on. I'm really happy to see the faces of my colleagues, prorectors for education, present and former uh, specifically with the former, former ones because it shows us that it's not the function that builds attachment but passion. So welcome all of you. I'm very happy to see you all here. Thank you very much. Now I would like to give uh, the floor to Professor Arkadiusz Merzik, uh, Rector of the Silesia University of Technology, President of the Conference of Rectors of Academic Schools in Poland. Thank you very much. Uh, good morning on behalf of the Silesian University of Technology, uh, also on behalf of the Conference of Rectors of Academic Schools that uh, unites 109 uh, universities in our country. The problem of the quality of education is of key importance. I think Rector Kozioek has already referred to the law on higher education and the changes beneficial changes that have been introduced by this law, I think I don't need to convince anybody that the process of education is one of the main pillars of uh, higher education. This is one of our basic missions, so we have to carry out this mission with a lot of care so that these ideas, when they're implemented, they are accompanied by the purposes that uh, the higher that higher education serves. A lot has changed. Legal environment has changed in the recent years. Uh, the environment we live in is, has been changing. We see civilization and technological advance. We see labor market changing, people changing even faster. And we need to prepare our graduates for that. We need to prepare them through a very interesting uh, curricula and giving them skills of the future, as we call them, mainly related to soft competence, creativity, uh, lifelong learning ability. Uh, these also include some requirements for academic teachers and lecturers. These are requirements that have to be translated into university programs that have to be adapted to changing needs and to a greater involvement of the economic society in the whole process of education. So we have to th think of how to implement it uh, in a beneficial way for our graduates because the biggest part of the community of university is the students. It's doctoral students at this higher level of education also. So please, ladies and gentlemen, let's discuss about how to improve this system, how to make sure that the system of education quality is not just red tape, but that it becomes a guidebook for excelling and perfection in education quality. Now I would like to give the floor to Professor Celina Orszak, Rector of the University of Economics in Katowice, President of the Regional Conference of Rectors of Academic Schools. The floor is yours. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I am really happy that during this European Congress on Education Quality we will have an opportunity to realize and emphasize how important the didactic mission is in the development of um, universities. It's the essence of our existence, but this didactic mission also has impact upon the development and growth of a region, country, and the e social and economic life. That's why the importance of managing the didactic process is of utmost importance. It's a fundamental issue, a very complex process, 
but also a very responsible process because here we need to rely on uh, verified uh, systems, accreditation, certificates, uh, surveys carried out in uh, among the, the graduates and tracking their further uh, careers after graduation. We say at the university that good didactics should be uh, implemented according to for you formula. It means in from the Polish language making it more international, more modern, uh, more scientific, but. Well, good didactics cannot be carried out without research at a higher level, but didactics and education have to be close to um, empirical aspects because it's otherwise it's groundless. And as we all know, didactics also require us to use perfect methods of education. We need to use technological advancement, achievements, uh, digitization, virtualization. It all has to be involved. And didactics has to be open to the world. It has to um, be absorbing the world and implementing the solutions that are successfully implemented by international centers. So to summarize, I would like to say that the process of education today is a great mission and responsibility of the university. We need to be aware that the way we organize this process that will determine the quality of our graduates and we mostly care that our graduates are prepared not only in substantive and technical terms but also um, in other aspects, they are prepared to solve problems in the society and economic problems and that they are able to face the more and more difficult challenges and new emerging crises. But I truly believe that through this consortium and through all these actions in favor of the process of education, uh, we can achieve much more and it will not only be beneficial for particular universities but for the region and the whole country. Thank you very much. Thank you. Now let's give the floor to Professor uh, Tomasz Szczepański, Rector, Professor Tomasz Szczepański, Rector of the Medical University of Silesia and Katowice. Ladies and gentlemen, much has been said, so I don't want to repeat that. So I will focus on medicine and on health. Um, as Rector Olszak has said, we want to be at the best level possible in terms of education quality. We need <coughs> academia at a higher level and we need to follow the trends and our empirical field will be the patient in this case. So we need to serve patients in the best way. And what's also very important uh, and gives quality is infrastructure. We need this infrastructure. And what's also very important is the satisfaction of academic teachers and lecturers. Please, all of you who have impact on that, try to have the biggest impact on the satisfaction of, uh, of uh, lecturers, academic teachers. And we need to be more practical. Practical students want such knowledge that can be as um, uh, pharmacists, nurses, diagnostic uh, uh, um, workers uh, in laboratories, uh, doctors. They need to have practical knowledge that they can apply, uh, apply immediately after the university. And what's also important is that we cannot only give the tools in their hands, but we need to remember that our graduates needs to uh, have this humanity, uh, hum uh, humanitarian qualities and approaching the other person, seeing the person. We don't want it to be just professional, we want it to be art. And the best quality we can provide is that professions become art. I think it's an ambitious goal, but I think we can all achieve it.
Thank you very much. Now I would like to give the floor uh, to Professor Grzegorz Juras, lecturer of the Jerzy Kukuczka Academy of Physical Education in Katowice, to take the floor. Yes, I. it seems to me that it's very it's growing more and more difficult to add something new to what has already been said. So let me just show you one thing and point uh, to one coincidence. Today, it's the day of students. Well, the story is tragic because it refers to the tragic events in Prague in 1939, but the day was established in 1941 and we're celebrating it. And this Congress is for the students. If, the, if we have students, I wish you all the best if you're watching us here in this room or online. And let's try and be as effective as we can be for them. Now, on behalf of Professor Grzegorz Heimler, the director of the Academy of Fine Arts in Katowice, the floor will be taken by Dr. Lesław Tetla, professor of the Academy of Fine Arts, Prorector for Education and Students. The floor is yours. Yes, obviously, I agree with the previous speaker. It's more and more difficult now to add something. I would like to welcome you on behalf of the whole community of the Academy of Fine Arts in Katowice. I must say that the Academy has always and is today characterized by the fact that the work with a student is very individual. It's always important, this relationship be between master and apprentice, and it defines our work and the way how we function at the university. Now, I would like to say that all these matters that we will be discussing here today, the, the, the systems, accreditation, rankings, etc., it's very important. But let's not lose this perspective related to a human being, to people involved in this process of education and the students. I think this perspective is very important. And I think it's the most important, actually, because I would like our universities uh, to give graduates who are well-educated but also empathic, open, kind to other people. So have a fruitful debate, um, all of you, and have wonderful meetings. Thank you very much. Also, Professor Władysław Szymański could not be here with us, uh, rector of the Karol Szymanowski Academy of Music in Katowice, and we extend our regards to him. Before we go to the next stage, i.e. Uh, thanks to different persons and institutions that support our event, please let me uh, the lecturer, uh, let me quote, give you another quote from our lecturer. It would be difficult to specifically determine what a university is. It serves even the smallest community and is a sign of society's shared aspirations. The former directs us towards respect for what, due to its not only special distinctiveness and remoteness, also in, a, in the metaphorical sense from the main road, still deserves careful attention. Well, these values are shared obviously with all members of the honorary committee uh, thank you very much for accepting this invitation and uh, for meeting with us and sharing your knowledge. We are very grateful. We would like also to thank members of the um, program um, board of the Congress and all the persons involved in uh, its organization and for uh, numerous long uh, meetings and the work on organization of this Congress shows that our consortium is extraordinary and uh, extraordinarily strong. 
It's a great honor for us that an International Congress on Education Equality uh, is organized under the patronage of the ministers and that are responsible for all members of our consortium. We'd like to thank uh, the local uh, authorities, the strategic partner the, of the um, consortium, Katowice, City of Science. And we would like to uh, thank the media uh, who enthusi enthusiastically responded to our invitation and took the International Congress on Quality of Education under their media patronage. And would like to thank um, partners of the consortium, and thus making our event international. Now I'd like to Mr. Waldemar Boyaron, Deputy Mayor of the City of Katowice, to take the floor. Thank you very much. Dear Magnificences, uh, dear professors, ladies and gentlemen, it's a great uh, pleasure and honor for me to welcome all of you again in Katowice, the European City of Science. And today it's a greater uh, challenge to speak after such prominent speakers. So please let me just um, tell you something about an exceptional city, the city of Katowice. Well, it's one of the youngest large cities in Poland. Its history is related to coal and steel. But when, 20 years ago, the, the local government of the city of Katowice uh, faced a great challenge of, um, for the future, they had to respond to the question, how, what direction should a city take to have a, a metropolis of two million people? And the first response was not obvious. It was culture. And that's why 20 years ago and later we had a lot of uh, efforts to develop culture in Katowice at different uh, levels in terms of investment, um, which we can see in the new headquarters of the um, um, of the um, so, um, Philharmonic Orchestra of the Polish Radio, the Inter Inter International Congress Center, and this allowed us to start the so-called culture zone in the city of Katowice. Plus, um, Katowice received the title of the European Capital of Culture, which was supported by universities and other, um, other groups, thus to develop a, the new image of the city. Now, it's the creative city of music um, as granted by UNESCO. So this stage is behind us. Now we're going to face another, uh, another stage, another transformation of Katowice into a modern metropolis. The driver of change uh, is now science. Making use of the great potential of Katowice universities, we are developing something new, the City of Science. This title granted to Katowice, it shows appreciation for all the, all the groups uh, that have been supporting us, uh, including the rectors, uh, who have been overseeing actively and supporting the process of education in Katowice to improve uh, the quality of education. This is the element which combines, which adds to the great transformation of the city of Katowice, thus allowing us to take a different look at this city. It's a great success that today the largest global events in Poland are taking place in Katowice. The UN uh, events are housed in Katowice, and this shows the potential that Katowice has. And to conclude, the, start, the establishment of the consortium is a great event for Katowice in the history of our, of our city. Well, a well-known businessman and engineer, Henry Ford, said the, com the joining forces, that's just the beginning. By staying in it, that's, that's development. But to achieve success, we need joint cooperation and work. And we believe in the success of Katowice, the city of science. 
Uh, I'm sure you're going to have very fruitful deliberations and I hope you, um, that despite the weather you will have a chance and take a while to see our um, city. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, we would like to ask uh, Dr. Paweł Poczytek, Director of the National Agency of the Erasmus Plus Program and of the European Solidarity Corps. The floor is yours. Dear Magnificences, uh, ladies and gentlemen, the International Congress on Quality of Education, well, the name says international, so we have quality, education and international. And that, when I hear that, I think Erasmus. That's why I'd like to thank you for inviting us. We are glad we can be part of this event. For 35 years, the Erasmus Plus program has been or has been organized in Poland for the last uh, 25 years. It has been an element of improving the quality of education in Polish uh, universities. What is very important is the word European, is the term European universities. This means not only joint research, but also joint uh, tasks to organize universities in a new way in, in Europe, but also in particular to um, agree on the didactic, uh, on the didactics offered, joint diplomas, joint courses. Many of you present here uh, all have already participated in this network, and that's very important. That's the core of Erasmus. And so all these elements are um, very important and combined in Erasmus. This is the DNA of uh, the Erasmus program. And that's why we are very glad that we can uh, support education. We declare um, our assistance, our help uh, for such um, events. We're with you. And one more important uh, word. Congress, well, we in Erasmus like uh, congresses a lot, so I hope you're going to have a great congress this year. Ladies and gentlemen, allow me, before asking an eminent, an eminent scholar, an inspiring teacher, a committed social activist to deliver the inaugural lecture, uh, I'd like to quote one, one, one more last time from the book, uh, from the book entitled, and if you don't have to learn, Tadeusz Sławek. What we are concerned with then is the defense of the traditional universitas, which means not only the universal, universality of the disciplines practiced at the university, but also the universality of the ideas and the values that animate the university. These ideas may be Polish in the sense that they have their origin in Polish writing. Their authors may be Polish, but above all, these ideas are universal. A universitas is formed around them, as well as communitas, giving asylum to those who seek refuge. Professor, the floor is yours. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I was called an eminent lecturer but I have nothing to do with eminence. But still, thank you very much. And the re rectors who spoke before me uh, were right to say that uh, that each subsequent speaker has it more difficult to speak. I am the seventh person. Well, to explain, well, I am a guest here as a Professor Emeritus. I think this is the character this is the character of uh, my person here so uh, thank you very much for inviting me to give this lecture and uh, I cannot speak more for more than 20 minutes so if you please let me I would like to uh, speak before you without uh, any um, any written statements a written lecture I would rather like to go back to what you're doing right now, i.e. developing a different uh, data that is to quantify the status of the given university. 
which in the, in the years 1996-2002, when me and other colleagues, we, we were starting this type of work in a very limited uh, scope. Now we are doing this in a more difficult circumstances. Uh, it's getting more and more complicated now, but in the 1990s, that was the beginning of the process, which I would like to, I, I would like to call info techno bureaucracy of management of university uh, that uh, cannot be um, overlooked by any rector. So, thank you very much for. Uh, putting the word education in the, in um, education in the title of this congress because it's a very broad term that is very difficult to define and it it uh, covers of it covers um, teaching and research in the scientific sense and that's why um, Education is an attempt uh, that we do not know whether it's going to be successful or not. And uh, changing the lives of uh, young people who in the future are going to uh, function in a, a certain professional um, um, arena. Uh, education is a difficult word to define when Werner Jäger, a prominent um, a scholar, wrote um, his treaty on Greek uh, upbringing, uh, upbringing and education of ma of people. He emphasized the complexity of this process, and finally, he used the word paideia, saying, "I'm not able to translate it." We can translate it as culture, including, uh, in the broad sense, including physical education. We have um, the artistic uh, values. Uh, all these are included in the word, uh, in the term paideia. That's all also in the term um, education. That's why I'm very glad that the title of Congress uh, includes the word education, because this emphasizes we're talking about something broader and uh, very close to the spirit of university rather rather than just just teaching or just research well ladies and gentlemen i believe what we need is well as Sjurat Mills, a uh, prominent sociologist, said, uh, he published in 1959 the um, sociological imagination. Here I would like to mention a pedagogical uh, imagination. And if we were to answer the question, what does he mean by that? Well, let me quote in the trans translation by Marta Buchholz. Well, what people need, quote, what people need and what they feel they need is the property of mind which lets them use information and develop their mind so as to understand clearly what is going on in the world and what can be going on with themselves, end quote. And he talks about sociological imagination. I'd like to call it pedagogical imagination, i.e. in every um, discipline, i.e. engineering, medical, artistic uh, discipline or humanities. Well, whatever this means. Well, in every discipline, there is a an element of pedagogy, i.e. If this discipline is to meet the requirements mentioned by rectors, like the rector of the University of Medicine, i.e. that the profession should be art, not only a passive uh, performance of learned professional uh, abilities, which naturally have to be mastered. The rector of the Academy of Fine Arts uh, mentioned the people who, in the long run, are the uh, the um, the most important element, not only students, but the model of humanity that we uh, care about. So ev in every discipline, there is a, an element of pedagogy, which makes us realize what uh, what is at stake at universities in the broad sense. I, what well, what's at stake is. Uh, educating people who are uh, conscious and who are 
um, thinking. Uh, well, going back to Mills, and uh, this well, sociological imagination is a very valuable book. Uh, where, uh, while wondering about education, he says, apart from abilities and values, we should uh, think about um, about other aspects, uh, such as uh, sensitivity, a type of ther uh, therapy to get to get to know uh, one oneself. I think this is a very important element of our um, profession within this uh, super discipline, if we can call it, call it that, i.e. pedagogical imagination. And still quote by Mills, it covers uh, development of, of the education of abilities of uh, talking with oneself, i.e. thinking, and discussion. Well, the definition of thinking as a dispute with oneself, that's fundamental, that's important, because this emphasizes that we want to achieve the knowledge about oneself, while at the same time emphasizing the montane Montaigne motive of the person um, learning about oneself, knowing perfectly well that they will not reach the end of the process. So the definition of thinking as a dispute with oneself and with the world, that for our activity is of great significance. Then quote by Mills, so a teacher has to start about from what an individual cares about, even if it uh, seems trivial. I think this is a, a very important, especially in the times of the pandemic, that's very important. But after the time, after the pandemic, the pandemic for young people, it was quite long because before that there was the um, teacher's strike, which also suspended some processes at the uh, at the high school and primary school uh, levels. So these problems seem uh, very important, even if we find them trivial, but this is um, significant. And the, the destination of education of, a, of people, now still quote by Mills, the destination is that the educator have, has to keep developing men and women that are going to be able to continue what they started on their own. The result being a self-educating man or woman, in short, a free and rational uh, individual. So that's about uh, that's enough about sensitivity, which uh, seems to be the word which has been forgotten. But I'd like to to go back to it uh, because I think it's worth uh, emphasizing as one of the most important words in what we are dealing with, i.e., education. As for the other part being rational, it's, uh, we're talking about rationality as the basic way of being or the basic way of ordinary and commenting the world, but it's something more. And when looking for the definition of the world, we give a good uh, basis from Montaigne, who has been mentioned a number of times in his essay on um, uh, sorrow, on grief, where he says that a, uh, the world is just a swing of changing things and humans get to know each other but will never know each other fully because they constantly change depending on the circumstances. So in the same essay, Montaigne speaks about wisdom and rationality. An educated person is not educated in everything. We sometimes have this flaw that we are educated in everything, but we are not educated in all fields, but a rational um, um, person um, is, is uh, uh, rational in everything they know, uh, even on those areas that they don't know, specifically in those areas that they don't know. We don't know, you will probably confirm it from autopsy, uh, we don't know probably nothing. We don't know anything about 90% of things that we encounter. But how 
to show rationality when we don't know when the effects when you don't know and you um, act in an irrational way you can see these examples a number of uh, like like making concrete embankments of the Oder uh, river it's, for example right that's irrational but there's more examples we see in the public space so the quest of the university is to create form people to educate people who are rational and sensitive who will be rational about what they don't know so it seems to me that that we need, we as university need two approaches. One, well, I would call it a skeptical and critical approach that takes this perspective on the reality as it is now, right now. We're asking about what the world is now, like now. And the other um, approach is utopian approach, where we look forward, where we look in the future asking ourselves about how the world should be, um, could be, and even more how it should be, what it should be like. The first one approach is dia diagnostic. There's probably a lot of things we don't like in the world around us. And the other approach is to give us vision of a certain world. And these two approaches have to be, have to correlate and correct each other if those who are, if, if skepticism has no utopian uh, look forward, we will settle in conformity and adapting to re ourselves to reality, filling in the tables and so on. If, on the other hand, we only rely to those vis on those visions, we can only uh, end up as people who uh, dwelled on these visions, on such vis visions alone, and history has showed us what happens in such situations. So when we discuss uh, decisions of the authorities, uh, which seem harsh to us, let's not fall into our own rigors uh, and totalitarian thinking. I think the task of the university is to reconcil reconcile these approaches. So the first approach, telling us what it is like, corrected by how it should be like, and the, the other approach, when we ask ourselves a question how it could be like in the future, taking this approach of how it is now and the marriage of these two things is something that can give birth to this educational uh, spark that I'm mentioning here because we don't have time to discuss it more in detail. Mm, so when we ask ourselves these questions about the universities where we work, what they are, then uh, obviously kind of an answer is provided by this info techno managerial approach where what every university sticks to it and cannot get rid of these aspects. It's very hard work. Every rector knows how hard it is and very responsible it is. But when we were to ask whether this is something that is the essence of life of the university, I would have a lot of doubt about it. I'm now referring to a great poem. It's a hundredth anniversary. Uh, of um, of of its publication, it's for um, um, it's barren land. That's um, that's the the title, and there are two lines in it, in this poem. Eliot says, "Let's suspend the context. We're just thinking about the two lines, two verses." Only we exist only through that that cannot be um, fi found in our obituaries. 
uh, this info and techno management which is necessary and we absolutely value and appreciate and acknowledge these efforts but they determine the contact between us and the great government structure and state structure these efforts are um, have to be there and they require respect but it's like an obituary like he was great he achieved this and that he received these and those medals he's got ABC achieved and obviously I, I'm using the word obituary because not, not because I'm thinking about the death of university but I'm using this metaphor so that we ask ourselves a question do we see the spirit of the university there it's a, the necessary uh, work we need to do but would the we like universities to be focused on that. Elliot says we're we're not alive in obituaries. Okay, it's hard, difficult, uh, uh, very difficult to write a, a, a wise obituary. So I really appreciate those info techno managerial efforts. But the question is, is it where the spirit of the academia is? And this question has to be asked without any doubt, the more so that the university as part of a huge educational ma machinery, as I think of it, it's the biggest uh, super machine that exists because the, you never get out of it. There are smaller machines like health service, like the military service. We serve, we leave, right? But you're you're ill and you're um, you recover. But with education, we're in it for the entire life. Janusz Korczak uh, summarized it very wisely in one sentence: Through school, people, children are drawn into general circulation. So we need to take care about the general circulation the sense of being a citizen, but we cannot exclude universities from this. Look forward, uh, the primary, secondary school, that's our responsibility, and also what's behind us, all kinds of forms of education, of postgraduate education, non-government organizations that deal with education or social practices that need academic support in certain fields. So, to summarize, I, I want to stick to my time of 20 minutes, so I'll be finishing. So, yes, yeah, so much for those basic duties and responsibilities and tasks of the university. Ultimately, what I call this uh, um, pedagogical, educational element and responsibility that has to exist in every discipline so that the rector of the medical university says that we don't want to focus on education on profession. We don't want it to be just giving a profession. Now, let me remind you that Friedrich Schiller, uh, I think it should be read at every university in his uh, letters on aesthetic upbringing of uh, people. He says, uh, let's be uh, beware of the the, the, univ the reality where people are just a reflection of their profession. If education is just for that, then I think we should not uh, uh, think about education is that this pedagogical approach should be that this well, it, it's in every field engineering humanities arts edu uh, physical education and any other so that we are rational and rationally sensitive Kant Emmanuel Kant said that what can I know what uh, I should do what can I hope for and what uh, who is human in every these four questions by Kant they should be asked we should ask ourselves 
What is a human? We don't want, uh, if we don't want a human to be a robot, re uh, limited only to educational skills, which are required, but as Schiller said by the end of the 18th century, um, century beware of the time where people are just gears in big professional machines. It's difficult to say why we educate ourselves. Is this magic, a mysterious magic that's in us that sometimes tells us to continue education against reality, that pushes us to uh, towards things, learning about things that are not practical, apparently, seem not to be. Uh, now, let me quote Bert, um, Brecht, um, Albert Brecht, who has been, uh, that is a translation by Rusha Krenitsky, and Brecht says, the, the poem is uh, called Answer. My little son is asking, should I learn mathematics? But why, I want to say. He will see that two pieces of bread is more than one. My little son is asking, should I learn English? Why, I want to say. This country is uh, dying. You just moan and everybody will understand you and grab your belly. My son is asking, should I learn history? And I want to answer, no, try to learn how to uh, hide your hand, head in the sand. You will survive. And then I say, yes, learn mathematics, learn history. To learn English. Education is education, no matter what we think. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Professor. Oh, I got a little bit messy with my pieces of paper, with my notes. Now I would like to give the floor to Do Dr. Raymond Tomek, Professor of the Academy of Physical Education, Vice-Chancellor for Teaching and um, students at the Jerzy Kukuszka Academy of Physical Education in Katowice. Please, the floor is yours. Magnificently, Rectors, I would like to invite all of you to take part in the, pan in the first panel of today's uh, Congress, which is called Conceptualization of, uh, entitled Conceptualization of Educational Quality and Quality Assessment, Assurance and Improvement of Process from the Perspective of Different Stakeholder Groups. The person who has proposed this concept of the panel is Dr. Maria Pruchnicka, Professor of the Univers Jagiellonian University, Professor is member of the accreditation uh, committee, and from the last terms of offices, last two terms of offices, the secretary of that committee. We know her from many trainings for the members of the committee, and um, um, the, also for university workers who are to be evaluated. She works at uh, the um, uh, management and social communication department of the Aguilonia University. We. Invited Professor uh, Dr. Agnieszka Jania Gasińska to take part in the pan panel, who is also a member of the Accreditation Commission Committee. Uh, she works in the uh, teacher education team. She's employed by the uh, University of Warsaw in the Institute of History. Our invitation was also accepted by Dr. Beata Mikołajczyk, professor of the Adam Mickiewicz University in Poznań, who is um, associated with the Institute of German Phil Philology, and she was the pro-rector for education. Professor Zbigniew Marciniak from the University of Warsaw, former chairman of the former State Accreditation Committee and the, main, the, the Council uh, for Higher Education. He was a member of the experts um, on OECD PISA related to the World Bank. And for two terms of office, he was vice minister at the Ministry of Education and for at the Ministry of 
uh, higher education. Um, our invitation was also uh, accepted by Professor Łukasz Sukowski, also a member of the accreditation um, committee. He works at the Jagiellonian University as he's pro-rector for academic research and growth of staff of uh, um, WSB Academy in Dobrowa Górnicza. And the state external stakeholders, employers are represented by Mr. Mirosław Kiermaszek, our man from Silesia, his director of the IT supply department at Kindred Spokazo related with the IT sector. And he also works with IBM on various um, positions. There is, um, we were to have Mateusz Grochowski, a representative of students here. He was invited and we remembered by the students, but for uh, because of some emergency, he could not come to Katowice and join us. So thank you very much. I will. Uh, I would like to give the floor to um, Professor Maria Pruchnicka. Can you hear me? All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen. Good um, good morning. I, first, I'd like to th thank the uh, panel members for accepting the invitation to participate in this panel. And I'd like to thank the organizers for the possibility uh, to present some reflections, some ideas about the term quality of education itself, as well as the processes of um, improving quality of education. Well, recently we have had quite a lot of events related to quality of education. Uh, just uh, one month ago in Warsaw, we celebrated the anniversary of 20 years of functioning within the Polish higher education system of the Polish uh, Accreditation Commission. That event was accompanied by the uh, by the Forum of Education, where uh, we uh, discussed the uh, more fundamental issues as well as the issues related to our daily uh, practices connected to um, provision of um, quality in education. Well. Referring to the um, speech um, given by my uh, predecessor, well, I'd like to say that actually the processes of developing um, quality can be treated as a um, permanent combination of um, activities that serve to get to know oneself, not only in the um, individual sense, but also in particular on the institutional level and thus to make a use of knowledge even in situations where um, this is not satisfactory for us, i.e. when we get uh, the image of ourselves and of what's going on in our institution which we do not like, the image that we do not like, then we have to not ignore that image but we should rather try to find ways of making it um, more perfect. And so like in the case of getting to know oneself on the individual level, uh, on the institutional level, this is the process that, uh, that never ends. And actually I think that's good because it uh, does not result from the fact that we uh, are functioning with their, within a closed group, but also we have the external environment which keeps changing. And that's why the image of ourselves um, is also, uh, also has to evolve in comparison with what's going on in our, in our um, environment. There is one more important thing in the processes of ensuring and developing quality, uh, cognition itself is of key importance, i.e. what we know about our uh, institution, 
how we understand quality of education within that institution. That's um, of key importance because the external evaluation of quality of education is of um, lower importance when we develop our image. We cannot think, oh, what will this or that institution say, the institution that um, is responsible for providing and developing quality. Just like uh, Professor Swavek uh, mentioned, and we have to realize that we've been functioning within a certain uh, financial environment, legal environment, political environment, and so we must not ignore that situation, but to provide and ensure quality, what is of key importance is the internal pro internal processes, uh, however we call them, whether we call them uh, quality management or culture of organization. And quite often I think, I keep asking myself how we can develop uh, organizational culture in in higher education uh, institutions where there is no stable staff that would be responsible for for performing certain um, uh, organizational policies but this is just um, as a side note i'd like to start this panel from the very source i.e from wondering so and the discussing uh, because certainly we will not be able to answer all the questions because we have a limited um, amount of time and i believe the greatest achievement of this congress as well as of all the other events devoted to quality will be if we go back to our institutions our teams and start think about some reconceptualization, redefinition of our activities in our um, path towards self-awareness and self-development. But I'd like to start from the very source. So I have been dealing with quality for many, many years. But there has never been a situation where we just sat down and said what quality of education means. What kind of aspects should be emphasized? Very often we uh, use this term on the basis of some standards that are established by different um, accreditation um, agencies, certification agencies that organize different uh, audits, including uh, standards devoted to provision and development of quality in the European area of higher education. So these standards are, for example, from 2015. Well, maybe, maybe we should start redefining them, taking into account what has been changing very urgently in within the environment of education. Therefore, I'd like to I'd like to encourage today's uh, panel members and all of you what quality means in your university, in your um, alliance of universities, in your European university, in which I have been operating. Because you cannot have a situation where you cannot agree uh, on one way of um, understanding quality, taking into account the diversity of that system. Well, we are now uh, in the premises of a university, so the level of research is very important. Uh, take into account what we can get from literature of the given subject when different authors uh, talk about quality, they usually list the following aspects. Perfection, 
exceptionality, this aspect should be emphasized or compliant with the objectives of the given institution or ability to achieve those objectives or compliance with a certain established standards. That quality is often defined in terms of satisfaction of the key uh, stakeholders and I'd like to warn everyone uh, because when you provide uh, educational services you should not concentrate on uh, on satisfaction because the service of education should uh, improve the needs to a higher level rather than defining simple needs just like we define uh, other recipients of uh, services. And we shouldn't only think about uh, the ratio of results to um, price or to costs or uh, capacity for transformation because certainly all these elements are included in our uh, understanding of quality. Diverse attitudes result from the complexi complexity of the um, term of um, education and it depends on what kind of institution and area uh, we use to um, determine this term and it results certainly from the high degree of complexity of all the processes related to the didactic um, activity of universities and from the processes of um, quality development of at universities and in, in that cost context I'd like to ask all the um, panel panel members to address that issue and the question from the point of view of key stakeholders of the processes of education and quality because here we have representatives of the uh, university of the employers and of persons who are directly connected to the both internal and external processes of um, quality of education unfortunately we do not have a representative of students because their voice would be very important too Therefore, what is your understanding of that attitude? What is uh, the key to quality? Taking into account the modern situation of higher education and within its uh, internal and external environment. Maybe let's take the order in which uh, you are seated, seated, uh, seated here while subsequent questions will be asked to specific uh, speakers and I hope we'll not run out of time uh, so that we can uh, discuss all these issues here. Maybe you will uh, voluntarily address some of these issues and please let me know if you want to address some other issues that are important within our uh, environment. Uh, Dr. Uh, Janja Kiasińska, thank you, Professor, thank you, Mr. Rector, and thank you for inviting me here. Well, there are five of us. I'd like to uh, cut to the chase. Well, if we look at the activities of the Polish Accreditation Commission as an institution of ex an external institution that pr provides quality of education, we can see clearly several meanings of quality of education i.e. compliance with standards so it's clear for everyone that in every cr criterion of um, curriculum assessment we have clear definitions of standards and the um, evaluation teams try to take a comprehensive um, approach to these standards the second uh, meaning of quality that we can see especially in um, our discussions and in the effects of our um, statement on the quality um, of education is the capacity of the university to formulate its um, objectives and to achieve those objectives. So we always start speaking from 
the concept of education at the given university. So what is the objective? What is the point? What is, uh, what is this faculty supposed to provide us with? What competencies should the students gain? What abilities should they get? And how is the university going to achieve those uh, objectives? And is it successful in uh, in um, reaching those objectives? And we should wonder how whether it's there is a um, comprehensive comprehensive approach to um, getting those objectives. Well, the certificate certificates that the accreditation commission um, grants show that uh, thinking. Uh, of quality as uh, excellence is present. Within the meaning of a condition where there are no fundamental uh, errors, where the university achieves the objectives it set, it can be a model, but it does not mean that it is does not have the responsibility and the obligation to keep developing itself to adapt to new conditions. It, I think this is more in the assumptions of the Accreditation Commission rather than in the practice of our activity that we understand this quality as the ability to transform, the ability to change, and I believe that formally speaking, it's included in every criterion of the curriculum. Because we ask, is the university able to uh, self-diagnose its uh, strengths and weaknesses? Is it able to to um, to develop a, a plan and um, implement it uh, in a comprehensive way and assess whether this implement implementation was effective? I think. We do not pay enough attention to making sure that we ask the university whether it is able to change itself. So, we have several um, several meanings of quality are combined, uh, and within the Polish Accreditation Commission is understood in a very cohesive way and in a diverse way. Uh, when I um, I look at the um, quality systems uh, at uh, universities. I've been doing this for six years, both at my university, the University of Warsaw, but also at others. I have the impression that this understanding of quality of education is important. It's usually understood uh, as meeting standards and it more concentrates on verifying whether we meet standards rather than on readiness to change rather than the understanding of the internal processes and the mechanisms that would mobilize us to to attempt to answer the question of whether we keep doing something well but also whether we what we do is um, useful whether it's uh, adequate to the challenges of of uh, contemporary times and what should be the most important thing at, uni at a university should be the ability to self-transform uh, in accordance with, with the diagnosis of challenges faced by the given university. I think that's the poorest element of quality uh, of education quality systems and I'm sorry that after four years of the new law in effect few universities have used have um, rediscovered themselves um, and have rediscovered the quality of education at um, in them in most cases it's only uh, on the on the surface ie adaptation of the uh, systems of education, so adapting the organizational structure, and they have not used this uh, moment, this chance to adapt their way of thinking and operating for their, to their own uh, objectives. Discussing the objectives of the system itself, and I would like to encourage all of you to uh, demonstrate our good and best practices, because 
I, I don't want to be too general because there are universities that have been successful in that area, but I think it, they are a uh, minority. Well, I'd like to use uh, a, the case of the, an example of a university that's not mine, but I don't want to make the mistake and uh, I don't want to talk too much about uh, solutions introduced at other, other universities. At the University of Warsaw, we we have been successful in uh, using this time and I hope that uh, Mr. Rector, who is present here, he will confirm that we have um, um, used it um, properly. We've introduced a new thing at the University of Warsaw today. We do not launch a new faculty unless another entity responsible for policies of education at the university issues a positive opinion on the concept of education at such a faculty. So first, the, uh, the entity that initiates this new faculty has to present in writing the concept of education. Why? What for? What is the potential? Do we need it for anything? Well, anyway, this results from a very uh, regular um, premises of improving uh, the competition within universe or among universities. And this system has been uh, working because we have blocked uh, some establishment of some uh, fac faculties and it operates because there have been prepared some recommendations of what to do to um, to make the concept uh, included uh, and executed within the curriculum. And it makes me uh, satisfied that we do not did not only uh, change on the surface. It would be nice if more and more universities demonstrated that their internal uh, systems have been adapted to their uh, needs, to their, to their understanding of quality, rather, rather than just copying uh, from others, because in the past I believe there was just one model that was promoted, we've, impl we've all implemented it, but now we should show that any everyone can have a different approach. Thank you very much. Before I give the floor to the next person, I wanted to say one thing. It's a very important thing is not that we don't treat any external system of quality assurance as a break for our own creativity, innovativeness related both to conceptualization of quality in the context of goals of a university. Please note that I'm speaking with reference to the Polish Accreditation Committee. There are no criteria of assessment of quality assurance. There's, there are uh, there's no mention of the goals uh, to be formulated by the university and how they are to be provided, how these uh, goals are to be met in terms of, uh, of, of, of this in this respect. There's total freedom for universities. This implementation of goals and understanding quality in this context is quite clear, we might say, but we're, there's no defined way of uh, proceeding. It's up to universities to um, to uh, design this way of proceeding and proving that these are effective ways of procedure and then monitoring them and perfecting them. That's also up to the universities. So my experience regarding external assessment, quality assessment is that very often this external quality assessment is treated as a break of uh, to, to innovativeness, as something that stops innovativeness. Uh, it has to be uttered clearly. It's a wrong thing, a way of thinking about external quality assurance. And this sign goes to both experts of the Polish Accreditation um, Committee and we also would like to th this approach to be shared by the universities. And now I would like to give the floor to the next speaker. Yeah, I think we're consistent about our thinking about quality, providing quality of education. My approach and my perception of quality of education is the outcome of my experiences as an accredited person assuring person assuring the the quality uh, 
on in in the department that, uh, where I work, and as also as a member of the Polish Accreditation Commission, active member of that commission. So my approach or my definition of quality of education is quite generic. To me, quality is craving for perfection. I have this impression that what we are dealing with now is very much relying on this inflation kind of. It's perfection. We're talking about perfection, but it's an idea. It's our Im, um, image of. It's what we imagined as as being perfect. But both ideas uh, and what is perfect of top quality, it's all relative, and they it all evolves. So it means that our approach, our perspective, our understanding of quality, also quality of education has to be continuously redefined because it depends on many factors, both external and internal. The quality of education, our systemic and reasonable, not spontaneous, not fast, but reasonable, sensible attempts of evolution of our education stem, for me, stem from the efforts in favor of satisfying the needs of the stakeholders of all kinds, starting from the society that, in my opinion, is one of the stakeholders, to me the most important one. Then we have the state that obliges us, pass laws and regulations to do certain things. We are happy when the state remains in a dialogue with us and the um, recommendations and regulations that are in place in the field of education are consistent with the goals we have for education in a specific historical period. They will change, obviously, with time, but it also should involve the needs of our students, and our responsibility involves shaping those needs. Young people come to us, to an institution, to an environment, and this environment will have impact on how these needs evolve, how they change. Students have very obvious needs, like the need for respect, the need for caring, for the well-being, mental well-being, which is very important nowadays. But they also come with dreams, with images they have of um, their vision of higher education, how their stay at the university or any other school will prepare them for further adult life. We, as an environment, have the role of shaping their intellectual needs, opening them to the world, opening them to knowledge and to science. But the quality of education is, and, and craving for perfection is also facing the needs and, and approaching the needs of academic teachers, that I am one of them. And to me, one of the challenges of our times is and the, the academic standards and, and caring for the academic standards. I'm talking about academic education because it seems to me that this um, emphasis on academic is very much needed. Academic education, it's not only 
the the education at the six and seven level of the European education qualification framework. No, but it also relates to tradition. It refers to uh, Humboldt ideas. It's um, education close to research that will allow our graduates in the future to get prepared for challenges, also intellectual challenges that we cannot foresee nowadays. They will be solving the problems in the future, the problems that we cannot even name today. We cannot even imagine today. Our task is to prepare them. That's quality of education to me. Preparing students to their encounters with knowledge, knowledge that is more and more complicated and complex. Working uh, within a team, solving intellectual problems. And introducing students in the academic research, scientific research. At various levels and periods, we have practical fields and, and, and academic fields of studies. I'm Honestly speaking, I'm not very happy we have this division into those two profiles. I have an impression that they intertwine and balancing the proportion between practical aspects and what I uh, call academic standard is also our responsibility. We also speak about accreditation and so I would like to say that accreditation as, uh, 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 come, brings to my mind several concepts like autonomy of the university. The task of accreditation is to reinforce autonomy of a university in, within the field of education. We create the concept of education. The concept of education can only be the right one if it has been discussed, created by the whole community. To me, the a quality of education at the university is dialogue, communication um, within community. And here I want to um, appeal to the directors that we should give impulse, motivate, and also that we appreciate and acknowledge the efforts of academic teachers during lectures and meetings that we elaborate clear concepts of education. Curricula are not tables, they're just derivatives of what we decide and they change. And the autonomy of a university, that's something that represents the truth also to the experts of the accreditation committee. Who are they? They are colleagues from the field, representatives of the same academic field. So an assessment of the Polish uh, accreditation committee is institutionally external, but by uh, but when you speak about the, the environment that is involved, it's internal. We as representatives of the universities have the task of, of convincing the experts of the Polish Accreditation Committee the values that this concept is based on and co coherence, the quality of education is good quality of education, is the ability to define specific goals, the concept of education, but also providing proper implementation of these goals. So these goals have to be defined in such a way that they correspond with our capabilities. So the first task for accreditation is increasing autonomy of a university, increasing diversity of education. We have deviated from ministerial standards some time ago, luckily. 
and accreditation uh, should strengthen these um, diversities in education that draw on our strengths, our institutional research, contacts with the um, social and economic environment, but also accreditation. It, I, I associated with uh, mm, with Europe and, 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 and being closer to Europe. When when I, I I'm not speaking about the states where accreditation systems were introduced earlier, but to me it's harmonization and unification of uh, education within Europe and within a specific set of values and uh, boundaries. And I think I will stop at this. Thank you very much. I think it's worth mentioning one more thing here that is also associated to what has been said, like uh, automatic accept and approval, where in European higher education we communicate we speak about institutional and organizational um, solutions that we cannot deviate from. And Professor Swavek has clearly pointed to that, referring to this very interesting uh, lecture. Now, I would like to ask the same question about what's of key importance in the quality of education. Professor Marciniak. Well, I couldn't speak so uh, so much, so long about quality of education. Well, it seems to me that we have made a mistake in allowing the aggressive language of economics to that area, because quality of education means that's a term like in the production uh, production uh, operations this language is wrong for universities why well for a very simple simple reasons university that's art not production what happens in the uh, in university uh, classrooms uh, i can see it in the I, I either i can see it in the eyes of my students or not today you, um, you can see whether students look at my, me or at their smartphones well, that's that's the the art. That's the art of teaching, and it's very difficult to address uh, results of activity. You can do, you have to do it in the best in the best way possible, and we all believe we do it. But when I stand in front of students, and when I try to pass on not knowledge but um, motivation to become interested, to well. That's where we need the combination with research, because if if I, if, if I mm, that's a very important difference for students, then I have the um, emotional involvement. That's 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 true. And so, how to assess the process? Well, it is worth doing to observe it to assess it, but the uh, well maybe. Uh, a better artist, not an official, but an artist, should uh, arrive and um, talk about it. It's uh, very difficult to do because our environment does not ha want to give um, give away the best artists. But on three occasions, I was involved uh, at the request of uh, I was involved in the state uh, in the state accreditation commission, and after you read the experience of um, the given person, it's difficult to um, to guess whether they will uh, pr produce better artists. If they don't say, you have to do this and that, if they just say, I do it this way and uh, listen to what the others are saying, that's how you um, have a better quality. But you can take care of it also within a university. You have to talk to your younger colleagues, younger lecturers. Uh, there are situations in my faculty when a younger colleague comes to me and says half of them failed. And he, so I said, 
how how did you prepare your exam papers? You should uh, ask your uh, assistants uh, what it should look like, because in maths you have when you have students at the exam, there is one thing they should be. You can be certain about uh, they never saw these uh, these um, exercises before. But you have to need to have the feeling of how to uh, how to prepare exams for students. So let's remember, education is art. So you have to your attitude should be uh, the attitude to art. Every year I participate in the inauguration, and only one rector uses the term that others don't the rector of the Academy of Fine Arts who you says uh, to students will try not to destroy your individual character. And among teachers, everyone is the author of the process and you have to reinforce these efforts by talking about how you do things. The Accreditation Commission used to be a, a better uh, speaker in this area. Thank you very much. If I may, Professor, I will change the, uh, the scenario. I have one more question to you, because we keep meeting often uh, to discuss different issues, so I was expecting what you would say. So my additional question is, is there any possibility to come to terms for uh, all the uh, processes of improving quality that are related to the fact that we have been functioning within a certain um, conditions, domestic ones and international ones. In, at public universities within different systems related to the spending of public funds. In private funds, well, it's, this, it's partly uh, partly the same. So we have been functioning within the culture of accountability of universities. So how are we to come to reconcile all the standards of a culture of quality, academic culture, and on the other hand, the formalized processes and uh, requirements which uh, under the law uh, are set under the law result from the fact that we need um, curriculum assessment of the quality of education. Yes, yes, I understand the question. I understand it. So um, the answer will consist of two parts. So first, we need the privatization of education so that people discuss among themselves how they teach and to uh, get rid of all the tables. And now, now Professor Sukowski, who I'd like to to ask, well, gentlemen, you sit next to one another, and I think Professor Sukowski will also demonstrate how to reconcile these two elements, especially that he's both uh, from humanities and from economics. So I believe, all right, well, it's too many, too many disciplines, too many. Well, thank you very much for inviting me to this panel. Let's start from an important uh, thing. The question you asked uh, addresses multiple aspects. So, if we talk it in terms of philosophy, we will say that quality is the pragmatic emanation of uh, ideas, of platonic ideas. We're talking about wisdom, uh, be beauty and uh, uh, and what's good we want we need we want want to have to know the truth about the world but uh, the practical aspect is more intuitive but it's combined with the idea of university and academics which is visible in development of um, 
the uh, of arts and the third category of uh, good is paradoxically connected to some social and uh, humanities disciplines where the question is asked not only how what the world looks like but also how we can uh, change it for the better that's a question from uh, political sciences psychology etc etc professor i love working with you these uh, these elements should be emphasized because i believe that the academic um, activity so not from the philosophical point of view but from the pragmatic one quality and excellence are asymptotic uh, path towards the ideas that we will never achieve 100 percent but that's the beauty of it because thus we are in the process of improvement all the time we know we'll never be uh, the static um, entities uh, who have um, gained uh, perfect wisdom or perfect beauty. So we are within the process. We can take an a, um, uh, asymptotic attitude to it, but within the um, discourse of economics and management, as mentioned by um, the previous speaker, we have a um, vulgar movement which uh, simplifies which uh, imposes tables, uh, rules, so learn 10 rules of management is going to be great. But what we need rather is the reflexive uh, critical movement uh, where we realize that uh, management and, and organization are creative processes, are reflexive processes, are processes which for me combine three points of view, uh, education, art, and uh, craft. So that's the second point. While the third point, the third point, it's looking from the from the a, a concise point of view. So on the one hand, hand we have the great idea of uh, universitas with three missions that have been uh, in effect to this day. We want to improve it. So whether we look at the ideas or pragmatic point of view, well, because I could suggest a very neo-pragmatic attitude to management. So let's let's look at it as a process of um, permanent or constant improvement. So universities are diverse. And not every uh, faculty is the best, not every university is the best in the given country. Even if they are, they'll have to face the world. And the best university in the world in the given discipline will feel, will feel uh, the competitors who want to um, overtake. And they have to keep improving, all of them have to keep improving their education. So that's a really constant improvement process, which should take into account also the rules of good management good management let me emphasize one that one that combines proper strategies resulting from reflection from contacts from audits from accreditation and self reflection and I agree with uh, the opinions presented before that there is no point imposing ex external uh, standards. On the other hand, we would like to see this process uh, as a dynamic one. We are in the era of digital transformation, a digital university. As a result of the catalyst being uh, as, uh, as a COVID, uh, it's, it's transforming our our uh, universities, and even though we remember about the utopia of uh, universities that everything stems from science, the master apprentice um, solution, I would rather take a pluralist approach that there are different experiences in um, improving quality. So some of them. Uh, pure culture of uh, quality, the master, the apprentice, the best teachers, uh, selection at the very beginning, etc. But also there are other solutions where you need good 
uh, education and quality management systems, ones that um, help, that compare. Ladies and gentlemen, we should not have a situation where, for example, private uh, private for-profit uh, universities, which, as a side note, are the fastest growing um, sector um, um, of education, they must make use of, uh, of quality of education improvement. They have to use their own experiences, they need accreditation, they need comparison, so definitely will not, uh, will never uh, forget uh, quality of education, uh, we have to avoid pathologies in this area. We have to re remember that this course, this course re requires a methodology. It needs to be an interdisciplinary uh, approach. And if I may, the last point to the last question, i.e. the Polish Accreditation Commission. Well, from my own uh, observations and experiences of the two terms, I have listed the positive, positive experiences of transformation. It seems that the transformation from, quali from a control of quality to transfer of good practices. Over the last 10 years, we have realized that it's not a control institution that may be at the very beginning it had this kind of function to detect pathologies within the system which was needed. But on the other hand, we do realize who are the members of this institution, who, 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 what are the, their competencies, that the point is to have peer reviews. Uh, so, in my opinion, this transformation is taking place, actually. This is a long process. Well, the second issue, quite an obvious one, from local to global. Well, we want to make use of international accreditation, international standards, and we understand that we are not inventing everything from uh, from scratch, that these uh, benchmarks uh, in management can be, uh, can be points of reference. That we can use. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, from minimum quality to perfection of uh, quality, we should have a different uh, attitude uh, to a local university or to a university that has international ambitions we want to discuss, talk to their representatives and get to know where their system is going, i.e. from standardization to pluralism of quality and I believe that this premise combining uh, education and uh, art and craft, because in the English language craft, the uh, if we can quote Kotarbinsky, the um, proper solid work, that's a key criterion. Not everyone has to be a discoverer, has to change the world from the very beginning. There are many who can do solid work and we should uh, take this approach in education too. So, education, art and craft. Thank you very much. Okay, before I give the floor to the next speaker, I would like to say that Professor Sulkowski has already answered the second question that I was going to ask of him, namely, what is the alternative for this um, prevailing accreditation system that is dominant nowadays in terms of uh, external quality assurance? In the situation of all these processes that we've mentioned, on the one hand, craving for transnationality, internationality of the system, more global systems, instead of systems for individual states, because that's the tendency now, but also preventing all these threats that are related to accreditation that we observe and see and we feel we need some amendment to this way of proceeding because external assessment is definitely not something we can depart from. But this stabilization, uh, conservative stabilization of the system, that's something we should be avoiding. Uh, this limitation of innovation, of didactic experiment, because what? Because uh, we're thinking that what the uh, the Polish accreditation committee will say, right? So uh, these are the threats. 
to allow these external systems promote innovativeness, mm, uh, educational and didactic experiment, defining on and the, on the other hand preserving the, the university's own identity but also promoting diversity in higher education. We don't need to be very academic. We don't need to be Harvard and Oxford. Life would not be very uh, colorful if we only were like that. And we won't reach perfection because we, the world will have to end sooner than the climate changes are going to end it. So that's what we've heard here. It's, uh, we've got some proposals or some answers. Let's hope to hear some more answers. But I also think it's important to change the way of thinking and diversifying these assessment methods. Before I move on to um, Mr. Kiermaszek, I know. I, I, I think I know the professor. What well, the professor is going to say? Okay, the floor is yours, professor. Well, I don't see a lot of divergence. We just emphasize different things. Maybe we emphasize self-awareness of university communities, where the consequence are, are autonomous, sovereign decisions that we support fully against the Polish Accreditation Committee, though this combat-related term does not seem to be very fortunate in this context. But it means diversity of goals of uh, academic learning and teaching, and depending on how we perceive ourselves as universities. So self-assessment in this respect is very important. And just one word I would like to add here. It's all related to our huge responsibility because these are our decisions followed by action that are addressed to young people and that engage young people and co-shape their future. Thank you very much. Now the academia has dominated the external business environment, but now let me give the floor to you back. Mm. I would like to ask you about what's of key importance for providing equality for the environment of the universities, for employers who receive this product, so to say, right? All right, thank you very much for inviting me. I'm uh, actually, uh, I, I don't feel very comfortable speaking in such a tunnel. Um, I just, I just want to say that in this simple way of saying what the quality of education is for us as employers is like the, the rate of adjusting soft competencies and other competencies to what the market labor market requires if they want if they can enter this market and successfully navigate it why am i talking about that well it is a very a uh, narrow field. Not every student wants to work in business. Some want to stay at universities, some want to do research, some want to work in NGOs. So we need different competencies. But from our perspective, what's important is that universities uh, when we're talking about this product, so that universities create this product, 
so that the, the graduates can adjust and find their passions and interests in the business environment. As the previous speaker have, uh, 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 speakers have said, we don't need geniuses only, right? We need people who can adapt, adjust to, they can deliver what is expected of them and they can grow constantly. That's an element that uh, we expect that the students that come to us and start working in our facilities, that they are willing to keep growing. Their minds are open in terms of multicultural contacts, multinational contacts, because these are organizations where they work, they're very often international, and these competencies are very important there. We can see it in the path of career of those workers who start locally, and end up globally. So these career paths are very interesting, but from our point of view as employers, what's very important is the level on which cooperation is maintained between universities and employers. A good example is adjustment of um, education programs that are to be adapted to this dynamic world we have today. So we really appreciate the participation in those accreditation reviews where we can, on the one hand, show our approval or disapproval, whatever we call it, regarding all the activities that we carry out together with universities. But also, we've got this vehicle that allows us to, to share our satisfaction of the final product. Because honestly speaking, all the forms of cooperation with universities on technical, hard, soft skills development, whatever we call that, are those activities that employers are very willing to take up in order to create the environment for future candidates for work so that they gain some competencies so that they feel, get a feel of this international, dynamic, multicultural environment and are ready for it. So when we're talking about the quality of education, these are the things that employers definitely look at. Thank you very much. I think all the speakers have had an opportunity to, to show their approaches very diverse. We've heard a lot of questions. Some have been perhaps suspended a little bit. Some answers and solutions have been suggested. Now, I would like to invite you to a discussion on these problems. No? Why not? Can we have a discussion? Are there any... Yes, we have a panelist here. Well, the students are not here, but I did not know they would not be here. I just learned when I came here, and I was thinking about that, and I would like to share my thoughts with you. Well, all of us, the Polish Accreditation Committee and the universities, as answer to the challenges of today, we should emphasize more the participation of students in the decision um, uh, making on changes at the universities, within universities. They should be involved in this process. We've learned how to ask students whether they like something and what their needs are. Well, by qualitative, by quantitative, sometimes qualitative methods, they universities ask students how satisfied they are, but they're not involving, engaging the students in the decision-making process. And I think we need that to when speaking about this internal system, because at PKY, 
as an external um, institution, the, the role of students is really in, extremely important. They always co-create the, the, the teams, assessing teams, and formulate uh, the, the opinion. But when we look at uh, shaping um, or introducing changes at the universities, the role of students is very small, negligible, actually. When we have those teams that should have in-depth reflection on the curriculum, curricula, that's this. It's just symbolic representation. If we have 15, 20 academic teachers and one student, then I would say that the impact of students on decision, uh, on decision-making process, is really minor, and they will. But the consequences, they share opinions and, and ideas with the universities. This climate uh, changes the, 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 the speakers for this idea that these are young people. So it's a huge challenge that we really think, not as a, a research group, um, as, as we think about them, not as a research group that provides data, but also co-responsible. Let me remind you of the Polish qualification framework that tells us to educate uh, team managing, co-decision, social competencies. Without that, we want to do that without this Polish uh, qualification framework because we realize that graduates of universities should be people who can co-formulate uh, decisions. Would we like to have special classes on that? No, we need to do it on the occasion of doing anything else when doing some research projects, implementation projects, but also including the students in the management uh, process for co-creation of the university. That's where we shape these competencies without Staking on partnership with the students, responsible partnership, we won't make it, in my opinion. I thought we would have another round of opinions. So I left this reflection uh, for later, but yes. So I think that Rektor Kozioek wanted to say something. Thank you very much. So, well, I. I've been listening with interest, and we have to remember there is a conciliation between Mr. Professor Marciniak and you. And you uh, but it's, there is a great value in that. There is an old uh, adage by Horatio. I forgot it in Latin. Um, it says, consent without consent. And maybe this is the only possibility to for how we should have this category uh, in terms of um, quality, because in quality we have an essential and functional approaches, and we cannot um, eliminate this uh, contradiction. And so the tension between the personality of the scholar that we need and which Professor Marciniak believes is the foundation of university education is, will only always be the tension between the system of um, quality assurance and we have to keep this uh, uh, this uh, this problem for a rector it's a terrible vision because the better system there is the more uh, controversy it's going to um, cause among scholars uh, who and will not want to accept the system. On the other hand, we have the Accreditation Commission, and for example, we have the professor who prepares wrong um, syllabuses uh, and who makes uh, very many mistakes from the point of view of functionality of the system, but somehow uh, they have the best uh, seminar uh, students who want to go there um, for, um, big, for the reason uh, of uh, what's not um, within the system. And the better systems we have, the worse teacher they are. And it's great that they criticize us. That's the dynamics that uh, that we need. And I believe this is the point of quality of education, i.e. Uh, continuous tension between substance and structure. 
And let's remember, it's not going to be a peaceful process. It needs to be civilized, but not peaceful, but not uh, peaceful. And, and I, the, my grand friend of mine, uh, Tadeusz Słabek, is not right um, hiding the um, the agony of this dispute, and nor do you, in this dialogue, uh, can you demonstrate this uh, brotherly love. No, it's a dispute, it's a civilized conflict, and we either uh, hide it uh, depending on which uh, whose position is uh, stronger, or we or will we um, assign value to it and improve quality of education. But I believe this is a conflict, it's a civilized conflict. Well, I'm not such a pessimist. Maybe we do manage to find some modus vivendi that will let us reach, reach a good compromise, let's call it. One more thing, if I may. If you have a good result, but you do not really know how you have achieved it, let's try to uh, s look at the path of reaching that good result, because maybe this is the path that will free us from over overly uh, formalization. I could tell you a lot about uh, syllabuses. Uh, as a um, specialist in information management, because I don't know why we uh, develop the syllabuses that we have. Well, so two statements. Well, civilized uh, conflict, civilized dialogue, that's uh, a permanent element of our activity in education, in science. And I believe I believe the effects of such disputes and attitudes can result in development of better better forms that we assign to the system. So I keep talking about diversity and flexibility. Let's remember flexibility. We need a lot of flexibility so that we um, do not go over the top so that the professor who is not able to write a uh, syllabus I'd like to defend uh, syllabuses because it's an element of didactic planning so you have to so it's not only a, a useless tool it is a sign it's a tangible sign of the process of preparing oneself to the seminar uh, cycle. Some don't need it. Maybe that, uh, that awesome professor who cannot prepare a good syllabus but is liked by students and seminar students. Well, but also the young uh, lecturers and teachers. Mm, some of them um, do not have experience with uh, the didactics of a higher education institution. Well, for them the process of reflection and uh, filling uh, syllabus in, this can be a very um, positive process. So, let's have flexibility and diversity of solutions and let's uh, define our needs and uh, our impulses for uh, development. Professor Sukowski, can you hear me? Thank you very much, Mr. Rector, for uh, this comment. I agree with the diagnosis that there is conflict, but it seems to me that the response to this conflict is dialogue, self-reflection, and uh, developing uh, pluralist uh, compromises. Because I, I like many uh, solutions. For example, an uh, artistic university with masters and students, and let's only assess it based on uh, results not caring about uh, syllabuses and formalization. But on the other hand, from the point of view of a business um, university, which has, if we do not use the rules of standardization and formal management and control monitoring, that would be uh, useless. So these are just temporary uh, solutions, temporary um, 
um, solutions, temporary uh, results. As I believe the discourse between economics and management, that's a um, that's a strong force which uh, wins with other uh, discourses because it's uh, competitive because the market uh, well uh, can be expanded to to the whole world. Mar we, we keep thinking market uh, always market. Uh, uh, at universities, we have the model of stakeholders, which is a bit different in comparison with the model of uh, shareholders. But in fact, unfortunately, the world is going towards uh, the market, the competitive criteria, and we have to find a balance. So we shouldn't allow all the universities to be put in one uh, in one group and uh, say that they all do the same but on the other hand we have to remember that our academic world is not an island uh, a utopia that we are free from digital transformation free from competition no that's not true ladies and gentlemen rectors are leaders they do not exercise the art of being a rector universities are organizations let's remember Public universities have to compete with private universities. They have to adapt to the um, competitive reality. They have different missions. Because a reflexive university is a universitas. Why a business school is a business school. Why, on the other hand, if the universitas um, ignores the um, economic and competitive approach, they will... Uh, not develop in the long run if the business school does not mm, mm, introduce the rule, the principles of uh, reflection. It will not. It will only uh, create producers, not uh, craftsmen. Uh, let's look at uh, such business schools as Harvard. To what degree they are uh, broad, inclusive, rather than just uh, simplified to some small, uh, small. Um, um, disciplines. Well, I understand all the um, economic uh, parameters such as market, competition, etc. But these are secondary to what a university should be. Naturally, we, can, we should not ignore them, but it's not the objective. Why, why burn all the, uh, all the tables? Well, the point is that in the creative environment, to create a body uh, above the, the dire direct um, contractor will take a responsibility away from um, the contractor. They know better? No, that's not true. The creative process has to be felt by the creator in dialogue with others because I don't I do not want to say that every uh, lecturer is a great artist no many ignore their work we do realize that but the environment should notice them catch them correct them and uh, throw them out if they are good keep them for example in my faculty for over 50 Years there was a person who did not want to do a PhD in mathematics, a great teacher. We kept him until retirement, ignoring all the uh, all the uh, rules. Uh, the environment saw uh, that he was a good teacher, and this is this is the attitude that we need. Not formal, not formalities, not uh, statutory laws, uh, which are not always. Um, followed we need to take a smart attitude this smart attitude is uh, the obligation of a university at my university the quality assurance body has a prudent approach prudent um, operation and now i know that what the situation is in other universities where there are there are internal regulations that make you produce uh, tens of pages of documentation while while uh, students' works are kept for several years in special special closets, that's all um, 
bull that is to suggest uh, quality assurance. There is no need. You have to get rid of such uh, solutions and you should get away from uh, the language of economics. Let's not say product. Let's say we have the honor to teach students. Let, let's take this approach. Students are to see us as um, people who are worth no, being noticed. Students have to feel the need to, to participate in our classes. And then you will remember these events from your studies, not your average grade. The average grade is not important at all. And the tension does exist. Now it's a power play, but all right, let it be. As long as you have people like uh, me, they will keep um, talking like me. There are some persons who do need the systemic guidelines. They just want to do their work. All right, so give them, let's give them the quality assurance system. Yes, I don't, I don't care about them. I don't pity them. Ladies and gentlemen, please, uh, well, the less formality, the better, naturally, but uh, some like it, some don't. But let's remember that teams are developed um, without need very often. It's rather a defensive mechanism. But, ladies and gentlemen, if these, if we have a few teams, it's not them, it's us. And the tasks of these teams are not how we are supposed to teach, but how to make, how to have a cohesive offer that we can call it a concept of education at a given faculty. Well, ladies and gentlemen, like at every conference, we have the limited uh, time resources. Unfortunately, two conclusions uh, from that. One conclusion that I've been pondering about for a long time is that the um, accreditation or institution of um, of um, quality assurance evaluation should be pluralized at the level of external assessment, state level, and in, as well as the internal level of quality assurance. While the other issue, as emphasized by Professor Marciniak in his last statement, is the issue of responsibility. No one can take away the responsibility for quality of education from a university and there is no superior um, institution in Poland or in Europe that would Mm, that would t take away this responsibility and it's only and university itself has to develop its internal internal mechanisms to make them consistent with the identity of that university with the objectives of its operation with the plans for the future with the opportunities challenges and and etc etc one more thing that I've been, I've, uh, well, I do not, I'm not sure whether it's key that we should uh, evaluate based on results, because look at what happened to the artistic schools that we've mentioned. All over, all over Poland there has been a painful experience of people harmed by the low quality process of education, the fact that they turned out to be prominent directors or actors or dancers, this was the cost that was um, assumed and so uh, there is the issue of um, quality assurance of quality of the process so the result is key but the quality of process that leads to it also has to be assured and this is also uh, the responsibility of the given school thank you very much for your participation i hope you found uh, what we've discussed here uh, inspiring and i hope 
that this discussion is going to be continued within your universities. Thank you very much. Please wait a second. I'd like to say one more thing. Katowice, as the European City of Science, is an initiative of seven different universities. We have University of Technology and three different academies. The task of the Academy of Physical edu Education at this Congress, which is one of the first results of the idea of European City of Science, uh, this task was not to have um, physical uh, PE classes, but to organize this great panel. And it wouldn't be possible without Professor Maria Bruknitska. That's what I'd like to emphasize again. And so again, thank you very much for uh, choosing the uh, panelists. I invited them, but I said I invited them on, on your behalf. That's why no one declined. Thank you very much, Professor, and uh, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. You are from Krakow, Warsaw, Poznan, so you had to take uh, the time to visit us, and it was a great pleasure. Well, if it wasn't for the fact that some uh, I would invite you to Katowice, but I'm sure you will want to participate in other events of the Congress. Right. Uh, so you will probably not have a lot of time to sightsee Katowice. Ladies and gentlemen, let's take a break right now. Please feel invited to spend it in an active way, as mentioned by Mr. Rector. And at 1.30, uh, we'll meet uh, in the Silesian Museum for further panels and events. Also at the uh, Humanities Faculty, I know students are going to have some events. So now let's take a, uh, let's take a rest.